fine. I'll play around with it while we do this. Um, do you want to sit on a flop to get a little bit of breath? <laughs> well, it's comfortable if you sit on a block. Like, you can literally sit on a block. Sometimes I like to kneel on the block. Like this. Yeah, <laughs> it's not usually a yoga pose. Hello. Can you hear? Can hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I, I've got this uh, microphone plugged in, but I haven't used that before. Yeah, it works well. I can hear you well. It looks cute. Hi. <laughs> this is my son, Casey. This Hi, is Casey. Casey. He's the studio <laughs> owner. I like the um, this way. This is the other way of the light not good. It just goes back and forth. I tend to just notice from my house, it's better to not... Oh my God, <laughs> I saw a cat walking by. That was my cat. <laughs> in my mind, it was walking by over there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just find that the light with the windows doesn't seem to work that well. Yeah, it's so, we've done it and it works, depends on the time of day and how it is, but this looks nice. It's the first time. I just set it up both ways so you have options. <laughs> Good, thank you. Here's Happy some. Mother's Day, by the way. You too. Hi, Hi, Tiffany again. Hello again. Good I'm to so see you. I'm proud of myself about yesterday. I'm so happy you enjoyed. Yeah, it's great. Okay. I'm getting going to get set up. Okay, sure. Everybody's got their little. Good morning. Hi, good morning, good to see you. Yep, I'm I'm gonna try again to do it this way. It's my third class, but this will be, I've only taken the restorative and the gentle, so this is, All we'll right. see if I can see and do this at the same time. It's, yeah. Good. This is my son, Casey. I'll probably introduce him again when other people are on. So he gets a personal in a studio. How sweet is that? <laughs> well, it's more like it's Mother's Day, so whatever I want goes. <laughs> oh, no. Good job. Any way you can get it. Exactly. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I had my 17-year-old take your yoga, Kristen, like two weeks ago, and he told uh -huh. me it was the hardest torturous thing in the whole wide world was it this class it was this, this class. class i'm like oh, it's just no. not bad so um he settled on a hike today instead of yeah. torture yoga yeah yeah well good for you you get to do both yeah, i get to do both yeah it is your day it is my day mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought this class was a good class for him to try to take. It's not super crazy and, you know, not super fast, but it was hard for him. Was it hard that day or? No, I just think he, you know, he, he's, he does yoga for baseball. And so he thought he knew what yoga was, but apparently it's very different. <laughs> different than what they do in baseball? Yeah. <laughs> baseball yoga? In baseball yoga, apparently there's a lot of laughing and uh, yeah. he could do tree pose though. That was impressive. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember the day I, I threw, I probably did this uh, arm thing in tree pose. No, yeah, I don't remember, but I didn't think it was a bad class. He didn't even make it all the way through. He's like, this is so hard. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, um, I've been talking to a guy who's a soccer coach and he, he, well, we both kind of had the same idea and we've been communicating of these kids who can't be actually practicing and, and they can't be doing their sports. This is a good time to work on some flexibility. For sure. Prevention with yoga. Right. So, 
I'm glad to hear they're doing that. Well, apparently it's not real yoga. So <laughs> <laughs> stretching's good though for them. I always feel like they don't they don't get enough stretching with all of their, you know, strength building that they do. Yeah. So let's see how we are on time. Oh, okay, getting close. Kristen, are you at Suka? I'm at Suka with my son. That's so nice to see the inside of Suka. I know, I know it is. Yeah, it really I, is. It's we set nice. up little, yeah. We set up little recording spots, and I told as many teachers if they can go do it there because it it does make us remember, right? It's <laughs> yeah. sweet, yeah. Yeah, Bethany, you set up such an amazing space that just being here is really nice. Nice. Although I realize I need something on the wall. We need to put something on the wall. <laughs> yeah, but then you can't do feet up the walls and anything. Well, maybe if it was like a decal, you know. Or oh, yeah. my, daughter, my, my daughter can paint you a mural. Would she do that? I want sacred geometry. Can she do sacred geometry? Oh, yeah, like yantras? Yeah, like a yantra or a flower of life or something. I think that would be amazing. I yeah. think beautiful. She could. Oh. Definitely. I mean, if you sent her something, I mean, she's in art school at Cal Poly. She, she could do whatever you said. Oh, wow. it's, it's pretty crazy. Her, her ability to those motor skills, those fine motor skills. Wow. Yeah. I'll, talk, I'll connect with her because I think I'll be okay. So I guess we'll get started since it says 11. And of course, the first thing I wanted to do is take a moment to talk about this important day. And uh, so sit comfortably, try to get a long straight spine. <laughs> yeah, okay, that works. Um, so when I think about Mother's Day, I, I think about the energy of mothers. I think about my mother, of course, but um, I think about that motherly energy, which is, and I know we don't all have great relationships where, with our mother or even get to see her on this particular day or, um, you know, I know it can vary, um, but I think about motherly energy as being this very um, selfless and unconditional love. And, um, you know, you think of, I think of nature too. I think of the earth as the mother and how the earth just keeps giving and providing. And um, it's a giver and we tend to just take and take and take. Oops. I think of, oh, let me go ahead and mute you guys. Hold on a sec. Um, and I think about like animals out in nature and how they will put themselves in harm's way to take care of their young, to, to protect their young and how they will feed their young even when, when food is scarce. And so it's just this very loving and giving energy and it exists in the world. And whether it comes from your particular mother or um, someone else, uh, it's pretty amazing. And it is that, that pure love that exists that has carried and sustained evolution all the way back goes all the way back to where we are now, bringing us here, bringing, you know, the amount of people that exist on the planet. It's, it's, it's this wave, this current of pure love. And yes, there's hatred out there in the world and there's greed and hoarding and, but there is also pure love. So I think that we see that right now, we see people and it's not all mothers, but putting themselves in harm's way to take care of other people. So that beautiful energy, um, just wanting to honor that. Um, yeah, let's start in child pose. So take a moment to really get yourself there, toes together, knees wide, and then rest your forehead down on something. If it doesn't make it to the floor, go ahead and stack your forearms. And then this beautiful, pure love energy that exists, at some point, it's really important to have that for yourself. 
And I, I feel like the breath can be a nice, uh, a nice symbol of that love. So while you're in this pose and you breathe, breathe through your nose and fill up fully and completely. And then when you exhale, let all the air out. So feeling the breath move through the back body, it's almost like a gentle um, rubbing of the back, opening up that space, comforting, soothing. And then when you exhale, you get to just let go and surrender. I like to think of my breath as a soothing friend. And in this case today, as that that energy of that mother, you know, when you were young and you skinned your knees on the playground or whatever, you ran to somebody who could just, you can kind of melt and sink into who held you. As you're a teenager and you're suffering heartbreak or, or you know, maybe friends who have done something to hurt you, there's always that, that, that somebody to go to, and maybe it's your mother, and maybe it's your sister, and maybe it's your father, maybe it's your friend, but somebody who loves you unconditionally and has your back. And connecting with that and making sure that you are that person for yourself. And then go ahead and reach your hands forward, walk your fingertips forward, and maybe press your fingertips down and lift your wrists up for an extra stretch in the arms and in the spine, and then walk the hands over to the left side. And when you walk the hands over to the left side and you take your breath, maybe you can feel it moving through the right side of your ribs. And then very slowly move the hands over to the right. And so that your breath, when you breathe here, you'll feel it in the left side of the ribs, gentle stretch. And then take your hands back to center. And peel up to all fours, hands and knees. And just your feet. So your knees are going to be right under your hips and your feet right behind. And you can have the tops of the feet on the mat. And then now move with your breath. So on an inhale, lower your belly, let your head and tailbone rise, arching your back. And as you exhale, round your spine, look towards your belly button. Do that again with the rhythm of your own breath. Inhale and arch. Exhale and round. Inhale, arch. And then on this exhale, round your spine and shift your hips towards your heels a little bit, extra stretch along the spine. And then on your inhale, just come right back up and arch, move the heart forward. Exhale, round and shift the hips back. Inhale, move up and arch. And last one, exhale and round. And now come back up to all fours. So you want a nice long spine here, neutral spine, gazes down, perfect gaze. And then pitter patter the tops of the feet on the mat and go ahead and allow this vibration to move up your legs, opening the front of your ankles. Okay, and then from there, slide the right foot back, curl the toes on the mat. So they're curling the other way. Yeah, and push your heel to the back of the room. And so you're getting a stretch in your whole foot, your calf, your Achilles. And if it feels good to you, you can take the shape and rock it forward and back. Stretching the calf, the Achilles and the foot. And then really slowly you will, with that flex foot, lift the heel up so it's hip height. Lift the heel up hip height, flex the toes and have the toes reaching downward instead of fanning out to the side, perfect. Keep the leg like that and circle the foot both directions. 
circle, keep the leg like that until you're circling the foot to warm up the ankle. Yeah, perfect. And go both directions. And then point the toe strong back behind you. Reach the opposite hand forward, left hand forward, gaze down and pull the ribs in. So you're engaging your core. If you feel wobbly, root down on the shin and the hand that are on the mat and engage your core. Good. Lower the knee and the hand down. Do the other side. So first you slide the left leg back and the toes curl onto the mat and you're pushing the heel back behind you to get a nice stretch. And then lift the foot up, heel height. I'm sorry, lift the heel up, hip height. Strong leg, toes flex downward and then we circle them. Yeah, so the hips stay level there, leg is neutral. And then point the toes strong back behind you. Pull the ribs in, reach the opposite hand forward. Palm faces inward, it's an external rotation of the shoulder. Feel that stretch, root down in the parts of the body on the mat if you feel wobbly. Inhale and then exhale, lower the knee and the hand down. Curl your toes and head to downward facing dog. So lift your hips up. Downward facing dog, making that inverted V with your body. You got it. So in this pose, feet are hip width apart. I have to be really good with my instruction because Casey doesn't show up to yoga class all the time. So soft bend in the knees so you can get rid of any rounding in your lower back. See if you can spiral your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Root down in the fingertips and the knuckle pads. And then focus on the inside of the hand. So that's the index finger and thumb side. And while you keep that, rotate the inside of the elbows towards the front of the mat. Release the head and neck. You can shake it yeah, shake it no. You can flutter out your lip to release any tension. And if it feels good to pedal your feet right here, go ahead. So feet hip width apart, that's good. And then inhale to plank pose, so the top of a push up. And you might need to adjust your feet because you want your shoulders over your wrists and then you want to be a plank. So you might need to scoot your feet back. Gaze is about two feet in front of your hands. Nice long neck, inhale here. Exhale, push back, downward facing dog. And move dynamically like that with your breath. So inhale to plank pose. Exhale, down dog. Inhale to plank pose. Exhale, down dog. Warming up the shoulders and then inhale to plank pose. Seems kind of funny. Lower your knees, lift your bum up, and then bend your elbows, lower your chest and chin to the floor. This is called eight pointed star. So you've got eight parts of your body on touching the floor. And then slide onto your belly. So try to be really long. This is actually a very gentle stretch to the hip flexor. Lift your right leg up, stretch it back behind you, and then set the top of the foot down, the toenail side. Lift the left leg up, stretch it way back, and set the top of the foot down. We'll do the same thing with our front body, top of our body, inhale, peel up shoulder, neck, and head, push the hands down, lengthen the heart forward, and then set it back down. Do that again, inhale, peel up, lengthen and lower, and again, inhale, lift, Exhale, lower. Move hands to lowest rib and push back again into a child's pose. Up and back. And in this moment, in this pose, reconnect with your breath. So sound to your breath as you breathe in and out through the nose, constricting the back of the throat. Called Ujjayi breathing, it has a very calming effect. It uh, connects with the vagus nerve, so it calms your body and it also calms your mind. We'll try to maintain that throughout class. 
And then come back again to downward facing dog. So downward facing dog, I always really feel this connection with the earth, and really literally plugging the hands and the feet into the earth and feeling that support of the supportive floor, which is, you know, going down, 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 actually being supported by the earth. Inhale to plank pose. Again, top of a push up, just your feet if you need to. And then this time, rock forward and back. So just push into toes and fingertips. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stay forward so your shoulders are over your fingertips, closer to the front of your mat than your wrist. I'm gonna put my knees down, warm up my shoulders. Inhale here. Exhale, bend the elbows only lower halfway down and then press back up. Good, and so the elbows are moving back behind you, lower halfway down and press back up. Lower halfway down, hover, place the tops of the feet on the mat and then straighten the arms and the legs and arch your back, moving the heart forward. See if you can lift your legs off the mat by really engaging them, lift up with it, yeah. And then move back downward facing dog. And then this pose again, this home base. Inhale, lift the right leg up, really high. The hips can open up. And as you let the hips open up, you try to keep the shoulders square to the mat so there's a little twist in your back. You could bend that knee, bend the right leg, and yeah. See if you can fan the toes of your right foot. Yeah. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, lower it down and do the other side. Lift the left leg really high, open up the hip and bend the knee. Hard, bend the toes. Straighten the leg, lower it down. And then slowly walk your feet towards your hands. Stay folded over. Feet about hip width apart, that's about two fists grabbing opposite elbows and just rocking side to side. And then release your hands down and if they don't come flat to the floor, that's totally normal, use some blocks. Place some blocks, you got three different heights and go ahead and use both of them. And then, oh, like this. So you can put your hands on the block and just Put a little weight into the hands and again feeling very grounded you can rock weight a little bit forward there so the hips are over the heels and then bend the knees and roll up slowly one vertebra at a time and once you get up there just roll the shoulders back And then inhale, reach your arms up, gaze up. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Yeah, forward fold, <laughs> swan dive down. Inhale, lift up halfway to a flat back, gaze forward, good. And then step your feet back, step your feet back to that top of a push-up. And you can have your hands on blocks or you can have your hands on the mat. Bend your elbows. You can have your knees down if you like. And then we'll do that back bend, upward facing dog. So arching your back and then going back to downward facing dog. This time lift your right leg up. Yeah, maybe move the block. Lift your right leg up, but don't fan open the hips. So leave the hips level, yeah. And then come forward, bring the knee towards the nose. Round spine like that. Yeah, inhale the leg back and up. Come forward, knee to nose. Again, inhale the leg back. Knee to nose, look at your right thumb. See if you can step the foot next to it. If it doesn't make it all the way, you just grab the ankle, move it forward. And then we'll hang out in the lunge for a moment. And so 
maybe fingertips or maybe blocks or if you're at home and you don't have blocks both. And as you gaze forward in this pose, notice where you're tight. It's probably that left hip flexor. And so send your breath to the tight spots and see if as you inhale, it can open it up a bit. And then as you exhale, you can release a little bit, soften. One more breath here. And then inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step the back foot into a forward fold again. Stepping the back foot in. Here we go. Yes, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. And then rise up, reach up. Come all the way to standing. Reaching your arms up and bring the hands right to your heart. So I'll do the left side. So inhale, reach up, gaze up. Exhale, forward, fold to your toes. Inhale, lift up halfway, gaze forward. And then exhale, step the left foot back. Oh, step back to plank pose. Sorry. <laughs> step back to plank pose. And then you decide. Knees are not lower. You decide hover or all the way down. And then your back bend. It could be cobra or upward facing dog. And then move back, downward facing dog. And here's where we go. So from here, we lift the left leg up. Keep the hips level. And then exhale, knee to nose. Bring it in with a round spine. Inhale, leg back. And then with your breath, bring it in with a round spine. Inhale, the leg back. And then step the right foot forward, right next to the right thumb. Pause in this runner's lunge. Come up to fingertips or blocks if you need. See if you can gaze forward and really focus on where you feel this pose. And the breath can open things up a bit and the exhale can soften. One more full cycle of breath in this lunge. And then you'll inhale, gaze forward, and exhale, step the back foot forward, forward fold, come up. And then inhale, flatten your back, gaze forward, lift up halfway, exhale, release down to your toes again. And then rise up, reach your arms out to the side, and then all the way up overhead and gaze up. Good. Exhale, bring your hands towards your heart. And we'll do that again. So inhale, reach up, gaze up. Exhale, fold over your leg. Inhale, flat back. And then step it back to a plank pose. And then on an exhale, bend your elbows and lower. Inhale, shine your heart forward, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step, lift the right leg up. Exhale, step it next to the right thumb. And this time, you're going to climb your hands up to the right thigh. Keep the back heel up. And then place your hands on your hips, bend the back knee, and shift your shoulders over your hips. So you've got kind of a vertical spine here. Reach your arms up, do a little dip down, go down and then up. And then fan your arms open to the right side. We'll be facing the window here. And then you can work to straighten that back leg, push the heel back behind you, so big twist here. You might even feel it in that hip flexor a little bit on the left side. And then we're going to take the back arm 
down and forward, both arms reach up, gazing out in front of you. Right hand will grab your left wrist and lean up and over to the right side. So you're stretching that hip flexor very deeply. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, lower the hands down to the floor. Step back to your plank pose. Then you could go right away to down dog. Or if you want to take the vinyasa flow, those four movements we do with our breath, you can do that. You decide. We'll do that on the left side. So lift the left leg up. Step it next to the thumb best you can. Climb your hands up onto your thigh. And then place your hands on your hips. And if you feel wobbly, you can just move that left foot off to the left side of it. Bend the back knee so it takes the arch out of the lower back. Reach your arms up. You can do a little dip there if you want, down and up. And then fan the arms open to the left side, so in case you'll be placed facing that blank wall. So from there, if it feels okay, you can work to straighten that back leg and deepen that stretch. And then the back arm comes down and forward. Both arms reach up. And this time it's the left hand that'll grab the right wrist and go up and over. Good stretch there. Inhale, come up. <laughs> you can hate me for this. And exhale the hands all the way down. Step back to plank. Downward facing dog or vinyasa flow, your choice. So really focusing on the hip flexors a bit, thinking about those hip flexors that do so much for our bodies, especially if you're athletic and you're running a lot. So Tiffany, your son, maybe. And then we just, we just kind of neglect to stretch those guys. Inhale, come up onto your tiptoes, bend your knees. Gaze forward. Take a little hop, hop your feet towards your hands. Good, inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold down. And then rise up and reach all the way up. Reach your arms up. And bring the hands right to your heart. And then you'll step your feet wide towards the side of your mat. So just in case you step your right foot back and face the window. And then turn all the toes. So take a very wide-legged stance. So when you take your arms out to the side, the feet are under the wrist. And then you want your feet parallel. Oh, that's too well. a little too, too much. So you want your feet parallel. So you want the heels behind the second and third toe here. So just turn this in a little bit that way. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Inhale here. It's going to be deep stretch to the hamstring. Exhale, lower halfway down to a flat back. And then inhale, come up. And let's just warm up our hamstrings a couple times. Exhale, lower halfway down. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lower halfway down. And maybe hover there. Bend the right leg. A little side lunge and then straighten it, bend the left, straighten it, bend the right leg, bring the left hand fingertips down and reach your right arm up, gaze to the side for a twist here. And you can use block there if you feel like you need, but you look good. And then from here, go ahead and come back to that flat back, straighten the right leg, bend the left leg. Lower the right hand down, reach the left arm up, gaze up. And then come to a flat back. Straighten the legs. Go ahead and place your hands down, maybe on the floor. Yeah, and then walk them between the feet. Walk your hands to the back so they're in between your feet. Yeah, and just hang. Release your head. And if it feels good to sway side to side with bent knees, go ahead. And then soft bend in the knees, come all the way up. You can roll up.
up slowly, just like we did in a forward fold, one vertebra at a time. From here, we're going to open our, open our um, external rotation of the leg. So bend the right leg, turn the foot so the toes are facing that short side of the mat. Adjust your feet so heels are in one line. Straighten your front leg by pushing into the ball of the foot and slide your left heel back slightly. Arms to a T. Reach forward, let your hips shift, tailbone points, and then see where your hand falls. Maybe somewhere high on the shin, that's fine. Triangle pose, trying to have a nice long straight spine. It's hard, keep breathing. And then Casey brought his arm alongside his ear. Go ahead and do that. Inhale here, push down the ball of foot. See if you can lift your lower arm. And then press into the ball of foot, rise up. And now bend that front leg. Go to warrior two. So the right leg bends and the knee is tracked right over the ankle, but keep facing this side. Yeah, and take your arms up to a T. Perfect alignment gaze over your right fingertip. And soften the shoulders away from the ears. You can even, yeah, perfect. Flip both palms up. Try to get the pinkies higher than the thumbs, still gazing over the right fingertip. And then reverse your warrior. So you're going to keep that knee bent and just start to hinge back. Yeah. Come back to warrior two. Here's one here. Reach forward, place the elbow on the knee, let the tailbone point back, upper arm lifts towards the ceiling, and then drop your right thigh bone. Pushing that down. And then the upper arm goes alongside the ear for this one. Palm facing down, and as the palm faces down, you try to spiral your heart and your gaze up a bit. One more inhale here, and then exhale that hand all the way down to the floor. The right hand goes all the way down to the floor. The okay. back heel comes up. Okay. Oh, that's your left hand, sorry. <laughs> and then reach your right arm up. So you're in a big twist here. Try to hug your hips in. Now make big circles with that arm back down and around. Big circles with the right arm. Three times. One more, inhale, reach up, exhale, lower the hand down to the floor. Step back to plank pose. You can head right to downward facing dog or take a vinyasa flow, you decide. Come up to your tiptoes, bend your knees. Gaze forward, step or walk towards your hands. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold over your legs. And then rise up, reach your hands up and gaze up. And then bring your hands to your heart. Now do all of that on the other side. So step your feet wide again. Make sure they're in line with each other, yeah. And then we'll just go ahead and do a triangle on the left side. So bend the left knee and turn the foot all the way out. Yeah. This way. Yeah. So you want your toes really, really, really facing. Inside of your foot parallel with the long side of the mat. And then heels are in one line. That right heel slips back a bit. Take your arms wide to the side, but straighten your front leg. We'll do triangle first. Push into straight leg, straight, straight leg. Push into the ball of foot, let the hip shift back and make that shape of a triangle with lots of long lines. So there's energy going down into the floor, energy lifting up through the upper arm, and then the tailbone and the head are reaching away from each other and you're still breathing. It's hard. And then we'll go ahead and take that upper arm alongside the ear. Yep. Inhale here, really root down in the ball of the foot and then lift the lower hand too. Yep. 
push into the ball of the foot, rise all the way up, yay, and then bend into warrior two. So you bend that left leg now, bending that left leg. Okay, arms are wide. So wanting the knee right over the ankle and not rotating inward, that looks good. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. Flip the palms up, try to get the pinkies higher than the thumbs, feel that in the shoulder. And then just hinge back, keep the left knee where it is as you hinge back. Reverse warrior. And then come back to your warrior two. Reach forward, reach and let this left side draw back and down. Place the elbow on the knee, upper arm lifting up towards the ceiling. And then the arm goes alongside the ear. Big side stretch, so you're like a launching pad, right side of the body. And as this palm is facing down, you're using, maybe even using the, the left elbow there to spiral your heart up and your gaze up. Okay, inhale here and exhale this right hand all the way down to the floor. All the way down to the floor. Lift the back heel up. And then we do a twist to lift the left arm up. And so yeah, you can have your hands on blocks. Push it straight up towards the ceiling. Yeah, so big twist in the spine, hugging your hips in and then making those big circles with that arm back down and around. So good for the shoulder. And then on this one, inhale, reach up, and then go ahead and plant the hand down. <laughs> Step back. Just leg. Vinyasa flow or downward facing dog. And breathe here. We'll move on from here. So inhale your right leg up. Step your right foot next to your right thumb. This time, lower your back knee down and the top of the foot down. Good. So again, more for the hip flexor right here. Really rooting down in that back, back shin. And then really rooting down in the front foot, pull your right hip back a bit and start to lift up. You can take your hands on your thigh or you can take the arms alongside your ears and then we're gonna arch up, gaze up, it's hard. Lift your pelvic floor, lift your heart. Exhale, lower the hand all the way down. Straighten the front leg. You can come up onto your tiptoes and flex the foot. So now we're going for a hamstring stretch. Yeah, so the, the hips are going to be right over the left knee. And then see if you can take blocks on either side. If you guys have blocks or books at home, you might want to start with that. And leaning forward where it makes sense, where you feel it, but you're not in total pain. And then go ahead and bend the front knee and come out of that stretch. Bend the front knee and curl the back toes. Curl the back toes. And then we'll go ahead and bend that knee and come back to a forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, lower down. And I think we step the right leg back now. Yeah, is that right? Drop the knee and the top of the foot down. You can walk the hands up onto the thigh just for a moment. You can stay here if you like, or if you did on the other side, you'll reach the hands up overhead. Rooting down parts of the body that are touching the mat, lifting your pelvic floor and trying to open up at the heart. Exhale, lower the hands all the way back down to the floor. And then straighten the front leg and the hips shift over that right knee. Use those, use whatever props you have handy. 
And so you can flex the front foot so you can get the calf involved too. And just move forward where you feel it. One more breath. And then bend the front leg, curl the back toes, and lift the knee. And then go ahead and move the blocks, and we'll step back to downward facing dog. Good. Inhale to plank pose. Really slowly lower all the way down to your belly. Like we did at the beginning of class, lift your right leg up and stretch it back behind you. Lengthening and then do the other side. You might have more length now that we stretch the hip flexors. Now peel out your cobra. Do all the work with your upper back. So much so lift your hands off the mat. Oh. Oh. <laughs> lift your hands up, reach them back behind you. Reach your hands towards your toes. Keep your gaze forward, yeah. Lift. And then exhale all the way down. Turn your head to the right side. Left ear goes on the floor, and you get to totally relax here. A little back massage. Use your breath. And again, in this position, just like in child's pose, since you're someone got stuck in the waiting room. Oh no! Can yep. you let Sharon in? Okay, yeah. Sorry about that, you guys. Okay, so head on to your bellies. Um, take your arms wide to a T, and forehead to the mat, and lift up. Lift your arms and your legs up everything you can. Try to have straight legs. So they're very active. Long neck, lift. And then exhale, lower all the way down. Turn your head to the other side. Arms along your sides in a relaxed way. And so again, in this position, I was going to say that I just really, I, when you inhale and your chest and your belly can't open forward, there's some stretches along the back of the spine that you can feel and just enjoy that. And also enjoy this ability to totally surrender down into the earth and feel held up. So I've not done this with Casey. We'll see what happens. Bend your knees, Case, and winch away for them side to side. Oh, yeah. And then see if you can grab the outer edge of your feet with your hand. Good, amazing. Okay, exhale your air out and then push the feet into the hands for the steep back bend. Does that feel okay? And then exhale, lower all the way down and push back to a child's pose. Your hands. And resting your forehead down. So catch your breath here. I want to read this quote that I, every time I read it, I think it's totally amazing. Um, it's by a woman named Lane Redmond from a book called When the Woman, Women Were Drummers. And it says, all the eggs a woman will ever carry form in her ovaries when she is a four month old fetus in the womb of her mother. This means our cellular life as an egg begins in the womb of our grandmother. Each of us spent five months in our grandmother's womb and she in turn formed within the womb of her grandmother. We vibrate to the rhythms of our mother's blood before she herself was born. I think that's pretty incredible. So Casey, you've been hanging out with me for 52 plus years. 
All right, from here, we're gonna um, just flip around, flip around right onto your backs and we'll set up for bridge. So lie on your back, doesn't matter which direction and slide your feet towards your hips. So slide your, stamp your feet next to your hips with your knees facing the ceiling. Feet are hip width apart. And then this variation is kind of hard to describe, so I'll do it too with Casey, but it um, feels really good, really restorative. So as you, your hands are along your side, Point your tailbone towards your knees and as you lift up one vertebrae at a time, also bring your arms up towards the ceiling and then all the way back behind you. And then as you exhale, you lower one vertebrae at a time and the arms will come up and then back along the side. Moving slowly, inhale, lift hips, peel up one vertebrae at a time and arms move with you until they're reaching back behind you. And then coming all the way down, arms return along the sides. Keep moving like that with the rhythm of your own breath a couple of times. And again, in this way, you're probably feeling a gentle massage. One more. And then you can take up any, you can take a bridge of your choice. So what that means is you can robot your arms or you can just, Casey, just go ahead and lift your hips. And it looks like you can probably easily scrunch your shoulders and your arms back underneath you a bit and interlace your hands if you like. If that doesn't feel good, don't do it. You can just reach your arms along your sides with the palm facing up. You could push the back of the head into the mat, but not the neck. Nice long neck still. And then release the shoulders and lower all the way down. Drop your knees to touch. Take your heels wide to the edge of the mat. Knees touch each other and the heels go wide to the edge of the mat. So you're making this little shape with your legs where your feet are pigeon toed and you're, you can totally relax there. And then place a hand on your heart and a hand on your belly. And again, reconnect with your own breath. And then we're going to go to Viparita Karani. And you don't have to move to a wall. If you have a wall nearby and you want to, you can. Um, and if you have any prop, it could be a block. It could be a little pillow. Go ahead and place it under the sacrum. And you can use the lowest height of the block. And so the under the sacrum, not the lower back, the sacrum, that triangle shaped bone at the base of the spine. And then take the legs up towards the ceiling. And just bring the arms in any relaxed way that feels good to you. So it's a relaxing pose. Viparita Karani means inverted lake pose. So think of your toes as the top of a waterfall and the waterfall is energy of a waterfall going down your legs into the hips. And then the belly, that's the lake, all the organs of the belly. And then there's a little stream that goes on the other side of the lake through the heart, through the throat. Another pool there in the stream is your brain, nourishing your brain. And then that energy can keep flowing out through the crown of your head. And then slowly bend the knees and lower the legs all the way down and we will remove the block. Actually, Actually, one more thing, Casey, keep the block there. So place your feet on the floor, stamp your feet on the floor. Yeah. And then straighten your legs, straighten your legs. 
So they're gonna go out and see if you can flex the feet and have the toes reaching up towards the ceiling. So this is a very gentle stretch to the hip flexor. Then you can take your arms up towards the ceiling and then back behind you. Big stretch there. And then bring the arms along the sides and remove the block. Hug the knees in. Yeah, why don't you do one at a time, hug the right knee into the right shoulder, rock it side to side. So this is super good for the lower back. It's also good for digestion. And then send that leg down the mat and hug the left knee in, rock it side to side. And then hug both knees in at the same time. Take the legs up towards the ceiling again. Place a block between the ankles. We'll do a little ab work here. I'll do it too. So. <laughs> take a block between your ankles. Yeah. So taking a block between the ankles here, having a little, or if you have a pillow, go ahead. And then I'm going to slowly lower my legs down towards the floor, squeeze the block, but hover, and then lift the legs up. Reach up, grab the block, place it between the hands, squeeze the block as you now lower the legs and the arms go back behind you, hover. And again, if you have a pillow, something nearby, and lift up. Put the block between the feet or the pillow. Slowly lower, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, lift it up. Do the other side, squeezing the block and lower. Exhale, lift up. Do one more time, reach feet, lower, squeeze. Hover, exhale it up. And then this time, slowly lower the legs and lower the arms. Set the block down. Stretch the right side of your body longer than the left. Stretch the left side longer than your right. Stretch and reach both away from each other. And then we're gonna do a big exhale and a big sit up. All the way up and reach towards your toes. Forward fold. And see if you can release your head and neck here. Inhale, come up. And face the front, Casey. And then we'll bend the right knee in, take the right foot in towards the inside of the thigh. Take the hands behind the back, sit up straight and tall. Make sure you're on the sit bones and try to tilt the pelvis. So pointing the tailbone back behind you and moving your hip bones forward. You can use the hands if you need to to make that action happen. Moving the heart towards the left toes. And then some of you are flexible enough, you might wanna reach the arms forward towards the feet, or if you have a strap, you can use that and forward fold in this position. Doesn't matter how far you go. Inhale, come up. Place a hand on the outside of the right thigh. Lift it up. Stamp the foot about a hand's distance between the leg. Take the fingertips behind the back. Sit up straight and tall again. And let this left foot slide forward and your heart will spin towards that knee. Then take your left hand and wrap it around and hug the knee. Inhale, reach up through the crown of your head. And then exhale, gaze over that shoulder. Exhale, 
and slowly face forward. Straighten the right leg, bend the left. The sole of the foot is on the inside of the thigh. Hands behind the back, sit up straight and tall, lift. Exhale, fold forward. Walk the hands in, move the heart forward. Whatever you did on the other side, if you use something to wrap, or if you just bow down over the leg. Notice the sides might be different. Your flexibility one side or the other. And then inhale it up. Take the left hand to the outside of the thigh, lift the Hold knee up, space between the foot and the leg. Hands behind the back, sit up straight and tall. Let the right leg slide forward as the heart spins towards the left knee, and then the right hand will wrap around. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, gaze over the shoulder. And again, finding length on the inhale, and then as you exhale, you really Pull the abs inward, and there's this massage you get to your organs. And then face center, and take your soles of the feet together, knees out to the side. Grab the ankles, sit up straight and tall. See if you can roll the shoulders back, so shoulder blades being pressed into your back. And then maybe lean back, maybe you feel a shoulder stretch right here. Slowly drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. And as you breathe, feel a little stretch in the left side of your neck and then maybe gently nod, chin to chest. And then roll your your head forward, bringing the chin to the center of your chest and all the way over to the other side. Now you've got your left ear to the left shoulder and just pause and take a breath. Feeling a stretch in the right side of the neck. And then nodding the chin. And then bring the chin to center and all the way up. Hands to the outside of the thighs. Lift the knees up and take the knees out or the feet out to the side. Keep the knees bent. You can use the hands behind your back again to try to sit up straight and tall and roll onto the sit bones. So those pokey things, you wanna be on those instead of the sacrum or the flesh behind the bone. So it doesn't matter how wide your legs are, it doesn't matter how bent they are, just try to roll onto the sit bones. Kristen, Sharon's in the waiting room again, sorry. Huh, no problem, thank you. It's her internet. It's her internet? Yeah, she's in Ireland. Oh. Hi Sharon, thanks for keep, thanks for returning again making it happen. Okay, so see if you can straighten your leg one at a time if that seems accessible to you, otherwise just stay there. You can sit up straight and tall, you don't need to lean forward, wherever you feel it is fine. Okay, good. And then take your legs out in front. And this time, I want you to place your hands next to your hips, fingertips forward. And you're gonna press down and see if you can lift your sit bones up a bit. And then if you've got that, go ahead and lift the left leg or the right leg, one leg, lower it down, lift the other, lower it down. Maybe see if you can lift both. It's very hard. Maybe grab the blocks, place them on either side, and try it. So, 
See if you can lift one leg and then the other. <laughs> Maybe both. Seen it done. And then release that and shake out the leg. Go ahead and get rid of the blocks if you were trying it with blocks. And then one more time, place the hands along your sides, fingertips forward, and take your feet hip width apart. You're going to press into the feet and lift up. And try to make a tabletop shape by you gaze up. Trying to get the hips as level with the knee. And then slowly lower down, place your bum down. Tabletop your shins. Reach your arms forward. So both toes. For a moment, we will take the knees to the left and the arms to the right. And then back to center. Go the other way. And back to center. One more time. Knees to the left, arms to the right. Flatten out the shape. Come back up. All the way to the other side. Flatten out the shape. Come back up. Find your modified boat pose. Take your knees hip width apart and your feet. Reach around, grab under the, right by the knee, grabbing the inside of the thigh. Pull your elbows out to the side. Move your heart forward. And then slowly rock forward till the heels touch down. Do that again. Pull the elbows out to the side, lift your heart up. Keep the distance from your torso and your legs as you straighten the legs. And then one more forward fold. And any props, you're welcome to use any props. And really slowly come up, and then we'll make way all the way onto our backs for Shavasana. And if you have props nearby and you want to use them, go ahead. Otherwise, just stretch your body long and let your feet and your knees flop out to the side in a natural way. And then take your arms as wide as you like. See if you can set your palms up. Palms facing up can help you open a little bit more around the collarbones and, and around the heart center. Close your eyes and just feel what's going on in your body at this time. Maybe you've released some tension some blockages. The fluids, the fluids moving more freely through your body. Where they can do healing work. So pausing at the end of class, so important. And then taking this time also to just be very present with your body. Noticing if there's any tension in your face, forehead and brow, see if you can relax a little bit more right there. And the muscles around the mouth and the cheek. Even relax your tongue and your throat. Your jaw might slip open, that's okay. Releasing that ujjayi breathing and just let your breath be very light and free. And let yourself be very heavy, held up by this earth. This earth that just gives and gives and gives. This, this earth that we are a part of. And so all of our needs met, all the food that we need, 
things that we need to shelter ourselves or clothe ourselves, the earth provides. And then ultimately, we live our life cycle for this brief amount of time that we're actually here on this earth. And then we, we all go back into the earth somehow. And in that way, the earth is a part of us. The earth is our mother. Notice the parts of the body that are touching the supportive floor and just surrender even more. Stillness in the body and the mind. Just the lightness of the breath flowing. And the breath is the closest connection we have towards life, life, our life force. So allow the breath to feed your life force and bring more energy in with the next few inhales. that pure love, unconditional love coming in with the breath. And feel it move all throughout the body, swirling around, down through the legs, and down through the hands and the arms. And when you're ready, place your thumb and index finger together. And just a light touch there and then make little circles with your index finger on your thumb pad. Just feeling your gentle touch. And then glide your thumb across your fingertips. And then very, very slowly Start to wiggle your fingers. And then wiggle your toes. And then when you're ready, add a little more movement to wrists and ankles. And then again, Stretch your body, stretch your body really long. You can reach the right arm and leg away from each other, right side of the body really long, and then the left side really long. And then stretch like you're waking up to the most beautiful day of your life. And roll onto your favorite side, either side. And pause for a moment here, close your eyes and Maybe set an intention of how to honor that energy of the, the mother, the pure love, unselfish love, and see how you can carry that with you throughout the next week and share it with others. 
And slowly make way to a seated pose, comfortable seated pose. And for a moment, place your hands just gently on your knees or your thighs, close your eyes and breathe. But in this moment, as you exhale, create a little humming sound. So that sound is like the last part of OM. Again, on your exhale, just gentle vibration. And on this one, we'll go ahead and chant OM on your exhale. So inhale for OM. Do that again. Just one more, and, and before we do it, just recognizing that OM is just a vibration, a vibration that we can create within our own body. It's with us all the time. And again, it has this calming effect, and it also has a healing effect. You can think about it, if there are any parts of your body that need special attention, special healing, see if you can let that vibration flow there. So last one, inhale. And the last thing I want to point out is OM. OM. So very similar to the word mom. And think about that's pretty much the first word a child says. Maybe backwards, maybe it's ma. Same vibration. So the light within me honors and sees the light within you. Namaste. Please go out and have a beautiful Mother's Day. Celebrate it in, in whatever way makes sense for you. Thank you so much. Unmute you guys for a second. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank Happy you. Casey was a rock star. I know. He did. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Full credit. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. So. Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, all right, you guys, I'll see you next week. Take care. Have a great week. Bye. Thank you, Christine. Bye. 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 Happy Mother's Day.